Right. Good afternoon, everyone. Let's get going. Um, my name is Gavin Lewis, and I'm the head of engineering here at Fathom. And uh, as I said, I'm going to be your host for the webinar uh, this afternoon, talking about Fathom, uh, the data set, uh, how we've developed it, and uh, how we go, we believe there are a number of applications for the data. So, yes, uh, I'm joined this afternoon. Uh, by uh, my two colleagues, uh, Dr. Lawrence Hawker from University of Bristol and Dr. James Savage from uh, Fathom, who were both heavily involved in the development of FabDem. And they'll be uh, presenting their relevant specialities regarding the data set. Um, so we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, FabDem. Uh, I'm going to do a short introduction as to Fathom and who we are and what we do. Um, Dr. Lawrence is going to be talking about developing FabDem. Uh, Dr. James is going to be talking about uh, some of the comparisons of FabDem to other terrain data sets that you might have. And then I'll be picking up um, uh, to talking about the applications of FabDem. And then we shall have some time for Q&A at the end of the session. So just a couple of housekeeping rules. Uh, if you would like any questions, we would welcome your questions. If you could post them in the Q&A panel, we will pick them up towards the end of this uh, session and, uh, and go through those questions. So please ask your questions through the Q&A uh, panel. OK, well, before I get into the presentation, what we'd like to do is um, actually uh, ask a, a couple of questions. Firstly, um, if you could uh, please let us know what data sets you currently use for terrain data. Um, do you have any particular um, uh, data sets that you use uh, on a regular basis? Um, if you wouldn't mind just uh, completing the poll, that would be that would be really interesting for us to just get a sense of the type of data that people use um, in their day to day working practices. OK, so I'll leave it up for another uh, couple of seconds. Excellent. OK, thank you very much for that. Well, uh, I'll share the results um, in the follow-up uh, emails that we'll be sending out uh, with various details of the papers and other elements uh, and links to this video uh, after, the, after the webinar. Um, and also uh, would like just a, a quick um, yes, no um, to uh, the type of DEM that you're using. Are you actually happy with it? just to get a sense of, of the suitability of potentially the, the data sets that you're using. Okay, I obviously see some uh, people answering. Thank you very much for that. Uh, okay, well, some, uh, that's interesting. Great, well, thank you very much for that. Um, I'll keep that open for another couple of seconds. Excellent, okay, well, let me, um, let me end it there. We've got over 80% of participation. So thank you very much for that. Okay, so uh, let's get into uh, a little bit about who we are and what we do. So, <clears throat> okay. So uh, Fathom um, uh, set up, uh, was set up out of the University of Bristol Flood Research Unit by two students doing their PhD uh, research into flood modeling. And uh, they felt that um, they wanted to essentially develop flood maps globally, particularly for data poor areas. And the science and the research they were doing at the time was really a springboard for them to develop the methodologies and the technologies that we currently use today within Fathom um, to develop and build our global flood models and data sets. Um, one of the key things that really underpins the organization is the background, the academic background and the, um, and the scientific rigor we apply. So everything we do, we create, we publish in peer reviewed scientific papers um, and we make those peer-reviewed papers available on our website um, because we strongly feel that being transparent around the science and the methodologies we use 
it's really important for our partners and clients to understand how we've developed the models, where the models work, and also importantly, building confidence that actually they can understand the methodologies and uh, and are confident that they are working and providing them an indication of uh, the, the, the flood risks um, that uh, they're looking to understand. So with all this science, what do we actually do at Fathom? Well, we build computational flood models. We take a big data approach to building flood models um, at a global scale. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but also at uh, a country and a regional scale. So we develop hazard maps um, and you can see a, an animation of uh, a particular uh, flood event in the, the US we modeled recently. We also develop catastrophe or stochastic models to take move uh, the understanding of risk and flooding uh, uh, across the spectrum to really understand the element of financial loss due to flooding. And of course, to build these models, we need to create good terrain data. So that's what we're talking about today with FabDem. And also we do uh, event response. And James will be talking a little bit about some of that uh, later on uh, in the presentation. Great. So. Let me hand over to Dr. Lawrence to talk about the developing of FabDem. Uh, thank you very much, Gavin. Um, yeah, hello everyone. So my name is Lawrence Walker. Um, I'm a post, um, postdoc at the University of Bristol. Um, and I helped develop FabDem. So uh, next slide, please, Gavin. Yeah. Um, so everything, I'm just giving a very broad overview of development of FabDem. Um, if you want to know more, want to know more details, if you can put the questions in the Q&A or um, find the paper, which is open access in um, environmental research letters or through the Fabdem website. Right, so developing Fabdem. Um, so how it all came about was um, I was working on a project in uh, Vietnam and the a new DM called the Copernicus Glow 30 was released in 2020. Now, um, this DM is based on TandemX. Um, it's a global 30 meter DM. Now, we did some comparisons with other global DMs, such as SLTM, Merit, ALOS, NASADEM, and um, found very favorable um, comparisons with that. Um, there's been a few uh, academically, academic papers around this, um, with this one linked in the bottom left hand corner here, um, noting that should become the gold standards of global DMs. Now, Copernicus DM, Global 30 DM, is a great, great DM, but nominally is a digital surface model. And uh, the differences why that could be useful or not so useful in applications is uh, can be seen in uh, panel B here. So a digital surface model um, essentially measures the, uh, the height um, of the Earth's surface. So that could be the top of a tree or a building or any artifact that is on, on the Earth's surface. However, for many applications, we want to know um, the terrain um, height. So that's known as a digital terrain model. Um, so yeah, flood inundations, landslides, migration, um, wants to know the, the height of the terrain. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, yeah, the problem is terrain data um, is not really available for the whole for the whole world. Um, so our kind of our benchmark is from LIDAR data um, and we estimate back in 2018 it was an absolutely tiny proportion of the world, way less than 1% has this high quality LIDAR data. So essentially what we need is a global digital terrain model to fill these gaps. Um, to date, probably the best one is um, called the Merit DM, um, which is a derivation um, of SRTM. And uh, that's a really great product. It removes forests, um, but not buildings. Um, so essentially, we, we had three, three aims here. We, uh, we wanted to remove trees from the Copernicus Global 30. We want to remove buildings um, and be the first global DM to do this. And we also wanted to um, use various image filters to remove erroneous noise in the Copernicus Globe 30. Uh, next slide, please. So how do we do this? So we, we chose a machine learning approach and uh, we went 
um, and the particular approach we use is random forest. Uh, we looked at various other different machine learning approaches and decided upon random forest. So what we needed to do, the first step is data preparation. Uh, so again, a lot more detail is in the paper here, um, but I'll just go over the central basics of it. So what we need to know, first of all, is predict, we need to use predictor data to essentially predict the heights of buildings and trees. Um, so we did a scan of all the latest and best data sets out there. So for forest heights, we use one from the Race of the Jedi program. Um, we use travel, travel times, population data, uh, night lights or settlement footprint, um, et cetera. So essentially none of these data sets are perfect, but put together, they give a good representation or estimation of what the height of buildings and trees might be. Next slide, please. The next key component was uh, reference elevation data. So um, we took this from LIDAR. Um, as I mentioned before, this is kind of the, the goal, uh, the benchmark of um, elevation data. Um, and we scoured the world and took information from 12 different countries. And we, what was essential was to capture a wide range of urban landscapes and climatic zones. So it would have been pretty useless if we just uh, took LiDAR data from Bristol and the surrounding countryside, because that would not represent, say, Kyoto or Delhi or anywhere like that. Um, next slide, please. All right, step two is the actual um, the computation what um, to create the DEM. So um, essentially what we did is is corrected for the forest and the buildings. So the dotted lines on these on this uh, panel, on this figure here, um, is the original Copernicus DEM, and our corrective service is these solid lines here. Uh, next slide, please. And then in the third stage, we post process them. So it's essentially we took the minimum height from east of the forest and building corrections. Um, we added a various image processing, and then our result is this: these kind of purple lines across here. Um, so you notice sometimes the machine learning might overcorrect with this black sort of light here. So our image processing is very important to fill in depressions or kind of noisy, noisy uh, pixels. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so how how is uh, FabTem different? So it's the first global DM to remove both forest and building artifacts. It has complete global coverage, unlike SRTM. It's the first terrain map at 30 meter resolution. And it's quite unique. It uses a wide range of reference data for the machine learning training. Uh, next slide, please, Gavin. Uh, so fortunately, James has had to dip out because his wife has just gone into labor. So uh, I will kind of um, do this bad down comparison um, part. So next slide, please, Gavin. Um, right, so we, what we have here is an image of Paris uh, in France. And the top image here is the Copernicus um, Glow DEM. So that's our original baseline DM, which we were aiming to correct. And the, uh, the image below is um, FabDem. So as you can see, FabDem is quite smoother and lower elevation, so the, 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 um, the colors are darker. Um, and our mean error reduces quite substantially. So uh, the median error, for instance, is from almost one meter to practically zero, and the absolute error also reduces quite significantly. Uh, next slide, please, Gavin. Um, here's an example in Germany. Um, so what we can see here is some forested areas along the river. So the forested areas are the kind of white, lighty colors. Um, along the, the river up here. Um, and having these forest artifacts uh, next to a river is really disastrous for a flood model because uh, it effectively acts as a, um, as a, a bank, a uh, erroneous bank. Um, so the FabDem uh, in the image below removes all these kind of white and um, yellow areas along the river. So again, we have substantial um, uh, reductions in M error, so from the Copernicus is about three meters down to just 20 centimeters for the median error. Uh, a similar um, substantial improvement for the mean absolute error. Next slide, please, Gavin. Um, next example here is from Rockhampton in Australia. So 
here we have um, on the left hand side, we have the Merit VM. So this is the kind of to date the best global uh, digital terrain models. This is based on FRTM and removes, um, removes the trees. Um, and on the right hand side is LIDAR. So this is kind of the absolute best elevation data that you can get. But don't forget, this is only, this is for only available for way less than one percent of the of the globe. And it's very unlikely that you'll have it available in your uh, test site. And in the middle is FabDem. So as we can see, FabDem uh, picks up a lot of the uh, features that um, you would see in lidar. Um, next slide, please. Um, and again, another example of the Mekong Delta, which is a, a favorite for um, us, us working in DM to compare against. So we have FabDem in the top left here. Um, in the top right, we have the Copernicus um, DM. And you can see in the Copernicus, there's lots of uh, artifacts uh, with those kind of pinky yellowish color, uh, which is trees and buildings, um, which has been removed in FabDem. And we also compare it to the Merit DM. Uh, in the bottom left-hand panel, and the NASA DEM, which is a variation of SRTM at 30 meters, which has a lot of striping, as you can see. Um, next slide, please. Um, we also, uh, in the paper, we don't formally compare against um, the uh, ALOS uh, AW uh, 3D30, but here we just do, do, do a quick, a quick um, comparison um, in Japan. Um, so in the top, Top left here, we have, have the LiDAR. Uh, top right, we have FabDem. And then we have the ALOS, JAXA, and um, uh, Merit. Um, if everyone, if anyone wants to do a more formal comparison, that would be, that'd be quite interesting to hear. Uh, but in the paper, we didn't decide to do that because generally the, um, that DM does not perform well globally. Um, next slide, please. So now for actually a few applications. Um, with University of Bristol and Fabulous background, there's going to be a lot of um, flooding applications, but um, yeah, Gavin will go on other applications. So um, yeah, this is a flood inundation comparison for Jakarta. Um, so this particular image here shows um, uh, so flooding, uh, river flooding in Jakarta, Indonesia. So on the left-hand panel, we have one based on the Merit DEM. On the right-hand panel, we have a simulation based on FabDem. So with this white box here on, on FabDem, um, we can see this very important um, canal is picked up, which is um, very important for the, the flood um, pattern in, in this area. Um, yeah, but because it's such a low-lying coastal city, a uh, large population, uh, has a lot of risk, but it's also very difficult to model. Next slide, please. Um, this is for the again for Jakarta, but this time it's for uh, flash flooding or pluvial flooding. So again, on the left hand side, it's based on Merit. Uh, on the right hand side, we have FabDem. So you you can see FabDem picks up a lot of the smaller features, um, and yeah, more local scale, basically. Uh, again, next slide, please, Gavin. Um, and here is kind of both of them merged together. So we can see that the pattern is uh, substantially different. Next slide, please. Um, right, so as Gavin mentioned, we've done a few event response. Um, so this is for Cyclone Batsurai in, um, in Madagascar. And the image we're looking at here is the blue depicts flooding or flood depth. And the red is uh, satellite observations. Um, from the Copernicus um, satellite program based on Sentinel. So essentially what we're looking for here is to match up the blues and the reds. So on the left-hand panel, um, this is our model based on the Merit DM, which actually does a, a pretty pretty decent job actually, but we can see it, the, um, the blue doesn't quite cover the, the reds. However, on the right-hand side, um, FabDem does a really excellent job um, of doing this. Sure, there's a few few red bits which are missed, but on the whole, um, it really depicts uh, very well. And we can see FabDem also picks up a lot of these smaller channels um, in, in the headwaters here. Next slide, please. Um, and also a more of a, a relevant example for, for Asia here. Um, we've done some 
simulations for Typhoon um, Ray in, in the Philippines. Um, so this is a coastal simulation, um, so, so storm surge. Um, this is a very initial map that we've just done here, but we thought we'd include it just to show another application. Uh, next slide, please. Ah, yes, there's on to uh, Gavin now. So, um, yeah, again, put some um, questions in the Q&A or uh, contact us afterwards if it's a bit more substantial. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Thank you very much for stepping into uh, James's shoes um, to cover his section on this. Uh, James is literally in the car with his wife heading to the hospital now. So um, he's uh, so obviously sorry he can't join us today. So we've talked a little bit about... Uh, the development of FabDem and some of the comparisons. I think it's a really important then to, to talk about, you know, what are the applications for, for the data set? But uh, I think firstly, it's probably putting it into context that actually why did Fathom team up with the University of Bristol to develop um, the, the paper and, and ultimately develop the data set in the first place? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we create uh, computational flood models and maps for, for, for global. And um, it's really important in any flood model. Um, I'm sure most of you know that uh, you know, terrain is the be all and end all. Water runs downhill. We need to know where downhill is. So essentially, the, the, one of the elements is going to make the most significant difference to the output of any model is going to be to the, the terrain. Our previous uh, global flood models have been based on originally the, the first version was based on SRTM. We worked with Dai Yamazaki at uh, University of Tokyo and developed the Merit data set, which we used for global, Fathom Global 2.0. Um, and uh, now we, be, through the um, release of the Copernicus Tandem X uh, data set, uh, we very quickly looked at that data set and felt that there was a significant benefit that could be derived in in, in uh, flood modeling. And so uh, that's why we've invested the time and the effort um, and to produce the paper and work with Lawrence at, at Bristol um, and uh, develop the data set because it's really going to underpin our next generation of, of global flood model. Um, it's going to be at 30 meter resolution for uh, pluvial, fluvial and coastal flooding. Uh, it will also include a whole range of uh, climate scenarios. So we'll be doing the current climate state and also we'll be building in future climate scenarios into the data set at a global scale as well. That data is going to be available uh, next quarter towards the end of Q3. Um, and if you would like early notification around our global flood data, then please uh, use this link below and uh, sign up for, for that notification. So just to put it into context and what that means for our flood data, this is some work that James had done previously in Zimbabwe, where we can see that uh, using the SRTM data, we can get a, a, a good uh, first um, view of the river channels in this particular uh, very uh, quite flat uh, arid location. If by then uh, overlaying that with the merit data, we can have a, a clearer definition of uh, some of the river channels and some of the secondary flow paths. But if we now overlay that and now use the, uh, the FabDem data set, you can see that we've got much greater definition uh, of the river channels, much more subtlety in the data. Um, and also we're able then to pick up the, the uh, the pluvial river channels as well. And so it gives us a significant step change in the data that, um, that we can develop and uh, provide to, to our clients by using the uh, FabDem data. So just a, a couple of facts and figures around the data set. It's a 30 meter resolution that I've talked about. We provide it in GeoTIFF format. Um, in one degree one, uh, by one degree tiles. There's 19,000 tiles in the whole data set. We talk about global coverage, um, but of course we are limited um, by the a certain latitude. So we get up, go up to 80 degree latitude. Um, and you can see there the, the mean absolute error figures there compared to Copernicus um, that uh, we've captured and, and put in the paper. 
So where essentially is the best place to apply FabDem? Well, Lawrence talked earlier about LIDAR being the gold standard, and we certainly see that. And when we're flood modeling, particularly um, at uh, in-country uh, scale, we really uh, try and source LIDAR. It's the gold standard, and it really is going to provide a, a much better um, view of flood risk in our models. But as Lawrence alluded to, uh, less than 1% of the globe is covered by LIDAR. Now that's expanding all the time. Um, and so uh, the alternative at a global scale for a long time has been SRTM or MERIT. And uh, as, uh, as Lawrence touched on, there are obviously some shortcomings with that data set. So FabDem really sits in between the LIDAR and is a significant step up from SRTM and MERIT. Uh, for that global coverage at 30 meter resolution. So if you don't have LIDAR, then FabDem is going to be the next best data set that you can actually use at a global scale, at a city scale, or even at an individual site scale. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So let's just talk about what we believe some of the applications are. Of course, we used it on, on water applications, flood modeling, I've just talked about a little bit. But we're also involved um, with some projects uh, on a big project in Brazil, looking at catchment and watershed analysis um, uh, for Brazil and ultimately potentially for the whole of uh, South America, where um, the Water Authority really needs to understand the catchments and flow paths um, coming into Brazil and, uh, and also the impact of those on the, um, the river networks and catchments uh, in Brazil itself. So uh, in addition to that, it's understanding flow paths. We talked a little bit about that earlier and, and ultimately the direction of, direction of flow uh, of the water, which is obviously extremely important. And, uh, and really opening up more information around coastal storm surge. Um, this is going to be a significant element in our new uh, data set. And, uh, and Merit will, uh, sorry, uh, FabDem will be underpinning that, uh, that work. But in addition, using uh, terrain data, in addition to flood data, there's a number of things that can be done around flood risk analysis, um, whether that's a single site or, or across a portfolio. Um, it's looking at things like spatial correlation between assets that may be impacted from one event or multiple events. Uh, it's looking at linear assets that are more susceptible to, to these types of events, particularly if they're spread over large areas at a country or even at a continental scale. Um, but also interconnected assets. So if you are looking at uh, a critical infrastructure, then you need to understand that uh, there might be interconnected assets, whether that's uh, site access to those particular assets, or it could be power or communication supply or energy supply to those assets as well. So it's not just understanding the risk to flooding uh, for those particular assets. It's also actually if a, a, a if a local substation or a pumping station gets knocked out in the vicinity, that could seriously compromise the effectiveness of your assets that you're managing. So it's looking at that interconnected um, elements as well. And uh, we're also in discussions with uh, one particular organization using FabDem for uh, identifying dams across their country and the, the level of water and the, the size of the dams from our data. So that's water related applications. Um, we know that there are a much wider range of applications outside of pure water uh, engineering and, and, and flood modeling. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And that's really, we see this data at that sort of feasibility master planning stage before the very detailed analysis on site where you might want to do actually fly LIDAR or do site surveys. And that's typically uh, you know, for use of routing studies for linear assets or, or linking um, communications, uh, site selection for things like uh, solar farms or wind farms. Uh, um, food production and agriculture is, is, is starting to be an interesting area for us where um, this data obviously can help underpin the understanding of suitability for certain locations for types of crop. Um, and, and that then rolls into obviously a huge area around forestry for, for plantation modeling and harvesting. Um, this is an area that we're not uh, we don't have too much exposure to and I know there are some people uh, on the call today that are potentially involved in the forestry so we'd be really interested to um, 
to uh, understand some of the applications you feel that uh, FabDem could particularly be applicable to. Um, we're also, uh, landslide modeling is an area that uh, some of our partners and engineering consultants like Arup have developed a landslide modeling, uh, sort of landslide model for the World Bank. Um, <clears throat> and we provide uh, our uh, data to the World Bank as well under the uh, Think Hazard platform. And so uh, that the landslide modeling was built originally on SRTM data. So we know that we can make a significant improvement on, uh, on the data with, uh, with FabDem. And then is 3D visualization. Um, this is a really nice one that, that uh, helps smooth out if you're looking at uh, using imagery to get uh, uh, photorealistic uh, visualization uh, of, of, of individual sites or, or large areas. Um, people have used SRTM in the past and it's been very spiky and very difficult, um, but certainly uh, with, with FabDem, it makes life a lot easier um, and uh, just smooths out and makes the images much, much better. Okay, well, hopefully I've given you a bit of a flavour of some of the applications and, and uh, I'd like to, to know more uh, if you think there are other applications. And that's not just commercial applications. Uh, uh, Lawrence is um, and working with the Bristol U University of Bristol are very keen to understand research applications as well uh, based on the FabDem data. So uh, please let us know if you have any thoughts or, or interest on that. So um, how do you get hold of the data? Well, um, there's two ways of, of uh, accessing the data. If you're uh, working for an academic institution and you'd like to use the data for research, then please go to the University of Bristol. That's uh, www.data.bris, B-R-I-S, um, and you'll, uh, you'll be able to find the FabDem data there to, to download um, and use. Um, if you are using or considering using FabDem for non-research applications, then you'll need to come to us at Fathom and uh, we will be able to provide you uh, some sample data for you to evaluate. Um, and uh, if you feel that the data is, is suitable for your application, then we will need to put a, a license agreement in place for you to, to use the data commercially. Um, and uh, that could be at a, a global scale, it could be at a country scale, it could be a regional or, or city or site scale. So we, we have quite a lot of flexibility about how you can use the data. Um, and wrapped around that, we have a, a variety of different pricing models as well for you to, um, to the, the <clears throat> that uh, need to be charged for the use of the data. So if you'd like to know more about our data set, um, and particularly for sample data, then please uh, use this email here. Um, if you'd like to go and get the research paper, the links are here. Any other inquiries um, will be uh, you know, uh, around the data set um, and the uses will be, um, will be welcomed. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you on that. In addition, we also have um, developed a very simple uh, viewer, FabDem viewer. Um, and the idea here is if you uh, look at the, uh, the link on the top right hand side, and we will send these links and uh, information out to you in a follow up email um, with a copy of the slides as well. Um, but we've set up a number of different locations uh, using uh, this uh, small map viewer. Um, you've obviously got the Mekong there, but uh, we have a number of different areas globally that are of sample data that you might find of interest. In addition to that, um, of course, there is the paper that uh, Lawrence and um, James have authored, and uh, that's available um, from our website, and we'll be sending out the links to that. Um, and uh, typically, we the uh, Microsoft has now decided it doesn't want to play ball. So. Um, what we'll do now is um, we will uh, look at get the questions we've received, uh, because that is essentially the end of, of my slides. But um, if we go to the questions, uh, we've got a number of questions here. Um, firstly, uh, <clears throat> OK, so um, one of the questions is, um, Lawrence, uh, why did you use uh, the random forest data? 
Um, so we, yeah, we use the random forest because um, it's computationally quite efficient, um, and to do this at a global scale, this really needed to be computationally efficient, um, and also it doesn't overfit the data. Um, so we did look at various of the of our, um, machine learning techniques, um, and we kind of found at this stage random forest uh, to be the best. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't consider something else in the future for when we update FabDem. Um, yeah, I hope that's kind of answered your question. Um, yeah, for that. We got a lot of questions to get through, so <laughs> um, yeah, so. Um, I've got another one here around, um, so that was the random forest data. Do you use the same reference data to validate, did, did you use the same reference data to, to validate that information? Um, and uh, no, so we, we did, um, what was it? It was, we used 75% for training and 25% for uh, validation. Uh, so sometimes there's a bit of crossover, but um, but it's um, mostly separate. And then we also use some data which we didn't use in the models, such as the ISAT um, to validate as well. Now, of course, if, if someone else has some uh, other LIDAR reference data, uh, it'd be great if they could do their, their own validation and, and feedback the results to us. Um, we've, we've covered a lot of areas, but um, I'm sure there's a lot of, there's many, many areas that we haven't, haven't uh, covered yet. Okay, thank you, Lawrence. Um, next question, uh, how do you take into consideration different vegetations or tree types? Um, that, that's, that's an excellent question. So in the uh, predictor data sets, um, we use well, forest height. So you would kind of think forest height would be, be the, the one and only one you need, but we also include um, different forest types. So the data sets of that, um, land cover percentage or, or canopy cover percentage. Um, and a lot of that information is, um, is kind of taken into account. Uh, we only correct, well, only I say, but um, we correct for vegetation above three meters. So we're not going to get your individual small shrubs, for instance. Um, but but the majority, but the the errors in the data, you know, those very small shrubs and, and whatnot are well within the, the errors of uh, many global DMs. Okay, thank you. Um, another one here: Can FabDem be used as reference uh, dem in SAR uh, infometry to detect ground deformation or subsidence? Um, I guess. In theory, yes. Um, oh, yeah, I'd really like to um, know more about that, actually, um, from a, kind of a research perspective. Um, yeah, I guess in theory, yes. Whether it's, it's good enough, it's difficult to say now. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I would just say have a go and and um, see what kind of results it gets back back with, really. Um, yeah, that's certainly piqued my interest. It's a very interesting application, actually. Okay, uh, thank you. We've got another one here. Um, what datum can FabDem be provided to? Some applications require DEMs relative to mean sea level, which may not be consistent, be a cons constant shift from a given datum. datum. Yes, so um, FabDem is... Um, um, the datum is the EGM08, uh, which is the same as Copernicus. Uh, but different to SRTM and Merit and a lot of other ones, which are to EGM uh, 96. Um, now, for academic use, we'll just provide it as uh, EGM 08. Maybe if you want to go into commercial one, um, Fabum could, could uh, do the date, date and conversion uh, for you. Um, yeah, otherwise, if it's for academic, just kind of download and, and I would do the, the vertical data and transformation yourself. Okay, thank you. Um, got another one here um, uh, related to the fact there was no no single best dem, and it really depends on the specific application. Um, and sometimes you'd actually want buildings required in your dem. Do you have the individual correction layers, i.e., forests and buildings, besides the dem itself? And if so, are those accessible? Um, so I, I yeah completely agree. Um, I end. Um, there's not always necessarily a best DM. Uh, you need to look at your use use case and um, and yeah, have a look at which is which is the best one. Um, 
and you know you might you might use multiple multiple dms um so and going on to your second part of the question with the building and forest layer we don't provide um these layers as standard because people generally want the um kind of the finished polished product so to speak um however if if there's a research application i would be um really interested to, um to work with you we're working with a group in canada who are also looking at the individual layers as well to understand this kind of intermediary steps um and the building and forest kind of predictions as well okay i see we've got another question around uh, more related to, to flood modeling from from someone um thank you for that question what we'll do we'll take that offline and come back to you with a more more detailed response um as james is not uh, not available um to, uh, this afternoon on the on the webinar um i've got a uh, couple of questions here one uh, another one asking um do i have to have the all the, the global data set or can i have it by a country region or or, or a, a city um you can indeed you don't have to take the the whole data set um because of the nature we provide it we can provide it at a at a an individual site or a city or a country scale. Um, and so we're very flexible about the, the use of the data um, for those types of applications. Um, I think there was one question, um, well, actually one point I wanted to make um, that's related to a question um, around, you know, is it a truly global data set? We talked about um, the, uh, the the latitude restriction, but also I think it's we just need to to say that we, although we talk about a global data set, those two countries, Armenia and Azerbaijan, that actually are not included um, when this data was produced. Um, each individual country had to sign off; they were uh, willing to allow the data to be pushed out to uh, open source, um, and uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, didn't do that, so that's why those two countries are not in the data set. Uh, yes, I add to that, they're also not in the original uh, Copernicus uh, data set, which we use as a baseline to correct from. So that, that's the reason for that. Um, basically, the two countries are at war at the time, so they didn't want each other to know about the elevation. Uh, but when FabDem is updated, and if that becomes available, we will update that. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Lawrence. Um, let's just see. Uh, one of the in the, another question in the comparison slides, we use, use merit um, uh, as a comparison data. I think we talked a little about a comparison Fabden to to SRTM um, and Asta. Did you do any comparisons with with Asta um, data set, Lawrence? Um, not formally, no. Um... Again, we we went through uh, in in the paper. You'll see a bit more like um, merit and some kind of visualizations with coastal dam and whatnot. Um, Aster, we didn't. Now we didn't do Aster um, because we wanted to keep the analysis not too overbearing. Um, and generally, in a lot of a lot of papers, people found Aster to be not as accurate as SLTM or merit. So we kind of thought, okay, let's. Kind of not not bother with that. Um, but if if you do want to do a comparison with Asta, that would be that'd be really interesting. Um, yeah, it's it wasn't a yeah we're not like cherry picking the results here, um, so to speak. Um, we just thought that um, Asta is is not as good as other global DEM, so uh, we decided not to not to do the analysis. Okay, thank you. Right, um, I've now managed to get uh, hopefully PowerPoint working, um, and uh, hopefully you can see the screen now. Um, sharing my screen, let's just uh, share that. Yeah, so now on screen you've got uh, the paper that uh, that Lawrence and James uh, developed and produced and was published in uh, which uh, which. Uh, literature was it published in scientific literature lawrence uh, environmental research letters um yeah so it was published a couple months ago in that um i imagine it's linked on this page here it's, it's open there's open access so um yeah you don't have any journal paywalls to to go through 
Yeah, and that, that's quite important. We feel that's very important to, to make all our papers uh, available on the website. So um, we'll be sending links out to this paper and to, to other papers we've produced for your, for your reference. Um, and if you do have any uh, queries um, on the paper, or um, then please contact uh, Lawrence uh, directly but also uh, contact us if you have any queries uh, about the data or you'd like some sample data. Um, and also to remind you that our global, uh, Fathom Global 3.0 is coming out next quarter. And if you'd like to know more about it, then please uh, uh, use this link or the, the URL that uh, is on the slide here. And we'll be able to provide that information out to you. Uh, I'm just saying, I don't think we've got any more questions. If uh, if you do have any more questions, then please um, do put them in the Q&A panel. Uh, we'd be interested for, for some more questions. Um, and, um, and Lawrence's uh, email is uh, lawrence.hawker at bristol.ac.uk as he's put in the chat for everyone. Lawrence, did you have any uh, final comments to wrap up uh, this webinar with? Um, I think so. I would say, um, yeah, thank you everyone for coming. I know it's quite late for some or quite early for others. Uh, yeah, just we're really interested to see how we use the data, um, applications, to hear what's great, what could be improved. Um, you know, FabTub's a constantly evolving project um, and the kind of more knowledge that we get from um, applications, which we're not so familiar with, especially, um, is, is really, really invaluable. Um, yeah, so, so just to say thank you for coming, really, and um, please, please do get in touch and, and keep, keep engaged, really. Great. Thank you, Lawrence. And yes, I would echo that. Um, we are... Um, we're already working with a number of interesting organizations using the uh, FabDem uh, data and uh, based on their feedback, you know, we're evolving the data set and we will continue to do so.